Endorphins are neuropeptides from the hypothalamus and pituitary gland. They cross the blood-brain barrier and head into the opioid receptors to block pain and create feelings of euphoria. And if anything I said resonates inside your head, then tune on in to the Endorphin Report. Welcome to the Endorphin Report. I'm Daniel. I'm Cynthia. And this is a podcast which is basically about Cynthia's quest for endorphins from romantic movies, including romantic dramas or romantic comedies. And what does this mean, endorphins, to you? Uh, the happy little sprinkles that come onto your brain when nice moments happen in movies. And sometimes it happens in bad movies, and, and sometimes it happens in good movies. What is the best endorphin sprinkle from the worst movie, just out of curiosity? Ooh, uh, I, mean, I just remember there was a couple Hallmark ones where, though I was like, this is the dumbest plot I have ever seen. When people kissed, I was like, that seems sweet, though. But there's usually a kissy moment in these movies. What makes it an endorphin kissy moment? I don't know. Something about, like, the way of they must, like, figure out the dynamics of, like, how long someone, like, holds eye contact or moves in a certain point or almost kisses or sometimes they don't even, sometimes they just hug. Sometimes it's not even a kiss. But it's just like, oh, and it's not just mm -hmm. like, it's not like, oh, I'm horny watching it. It's literally like, oh, it's just a nice, happy little sparkling feeling in my brain. So life's mysteries, life's brain mysteries. Life's brain mysteries, indeed. Yeah. I think that clears it up. That's the premise of the podcast. We tried a couple different formats, but what we're going to try this time is Cynthia telling me about this movie that she just saw and is excited to talk about. <laughs> we'll talk about some segments, like the next day, what happens after the couple gets together. Uh, will they make it? Ooh versus you, different kinds of wooing tactics. And ended up with the endorphin report, where Cynthia will say, is it worth it? Does it have the endorphins? Does it deliver? Does it deliver? Okay, so tell us about this movie. What is it? So, it is on Netflix. Uh, in a small town, we have it opens up with Mac, who's a detective, who is dressed as an elf. She's a spunky little brunette. Her partner's in a van, and her thing about her is, I guess, that she is trying to catch a suspect, but to try to talk to him or get information, she needs to flirt with him, and everyone's like, oh, she flirts bad, because, you know, she's hot. She has to have flaws, I guess. Wait a minute. Does she have to go to a flirt coach to be a better detective? Well, to start here, they show how bad she is. She looks like she's having a stroke somewhat with like the way she's licking her lips. And he's like, are you okay, ma'am? And she's <laughs> like, who are you calling ma'am? I'm only two years older than you. And he's like, how do you know that? And he goes, ah, you're a cop. So she's, a, she's not a good cop. <laughs> she's a terrible cop. And she runs after him, tackles him. She breaks his arm accidentally, even though she tackles him into a whole bucket of like soft plush toys then she gets a talking to with her partner and the, the chief of police was she trying to flirt while dressed as an yes elf? yes she was okay. and her way of flirting is she's like walking up and she's like you know how are you and she talks about christmas trees because they're near christmas trees and her quirky thing is she knows a lot about christmas trees and christmas and he's like why do you know a lot about christmas trees because like because christmas is awesome and then you see why she's so obsessed because they go into the police chief's office who it's like Christmas on crack. It's just like in the small office, there's like three Christmas trees. The Christmas chief is covered in all this Christmas blitz, all this glitter, glint of all stuff all over her. And it turns out it's her mom. So she says things like for Santa's sake and like everything she touches is like Christmas related. She's just got the most Christmas swag I've ever seen in an office. <laughs> so her mom works? Her mom is the just... chief of police. Oh, wow. Yeah. And she's worried that her daughter can't flirt well. She's very concerned about that. And the fact that she broke a uh -huh. guy's arm. She's worried about that a little bit, too. Okay. Oh, and then she's, she tells her mom she's going to go there like, well, we need to get you better at flirting. And she goes to a singles mixer that her friend is running. And uh -huh. uh, basically, her two friends are there because, you know, you got to have the support of friends. And they're like, why aren't you with your partner? Like, why don't you date your partner, who is a very nice guy in this thing? She goes, oh, he's like a brother, you know. And she looks at her friend and is like, but you can't date him either. And the friend's like, oh, shucks. Um, so I don't know why she gets <laughs> why dibs not? on her friend. 
so then they're all at this mixer. And what I could not stop staring at is they have these like mugs full of like, it looks like boozy hot chocolate with this beautiful whipped cream with like candy canes in them that nobody is touching because they're probably fake. So everybody's holding a very decorated drink with whipped cream that I wish I could have right now. And nobody's touching it the whole time. So it's very entertaining. And the guys look like stockbrokers wearing antlers and Santa hats. So it's a very bizarre mixer. So people were like, you need to like talk to some guy. And she goes, I don't want it to be like this. I want meeting a guy to be serendipitous. I want it to be <gasps> magical. And they're like, okay, you, you know. And that's kind of a high bar. I know. Like she's just, you know, she's got that little look in her face, that crazy little look. Like it needs to be magical. <laughs> she loves the word serendipitous. I'm mad that this movie's going to deliver it. Oh too. my gosh. The movie's going to deliver serendipity. Without being the movie Serendipity. So this guy walks over to her who's got like antlers and is dressed like a stockbroker. And he's like, looks like Santa dropped off my present early. Is that a line people really say? <laughs> <laughs> that's the first thing he that's says to her. That's the first thing he says to her. And she goes, mm, I got a phone call. I got to go. And she walks away. And her friend is totally fine being sloppy seconds. No problem. And the friend says, I wrote this down. <laughs> Are you Christmas? Because I want to marry you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like intentional humor. <laughs> there was That's like, fun. I mean, yeah, this is the dialogue of the film. And I was like, this film be crazy. Uh, I don't, you know, it's good natured, whatever. It's so dumb. Yeah. It's hilarious. It's great. I found this film dumb and good natured. I'll bet somebody just threw it to the actor on the <laughs> day. And like... the actor was like, really? Okay, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> and then are you must be christmas because i want to marry yeah. you no it says are you christmas because i want to marry you that doesn't even make a lot of sense but but you know you got to just do the puns christmas puns in this uh -huh. film so she goes outside oh wait i just got that it was a pun. it was a pun you didn't realize that mary m-e-r-r-y mary wow okay that's even cleverer than i thought yeah i thought it was just someone who wanted to marry christmas so the girl goes outside because her partner called her on the phone and she sees that the Christmas tree, because she checks out every Christmas tree like it's porno, like it's a porn in this, like, in this thing. And she's like, oh, uh -huh. what a good tree. And then, but it's tilted, like the, the Christmas tree star is a little tilted. So she gets up on her heels on, like, some stool to try to fix it. And then, big surprise, she falls and a guy catches her who she happens to find very attractive. And they have a look at each other like, oh, Hello. It's this guy who's like tall, dark, I guess people would say handsome. He's got a huge puff of hair floating over his face, which kind of makes me feel like his face looks like a moon, like a crescent moon, the way it's just kind of curved. He's got a poof the whole time. And he does a lot of dark staring at her, which is not effective. Sometimes it's effective in films. It's not effective. But he does staring. And he's like, oh, it seems like you're a great catch. Or he's like, you know. Wait, wait, did he say that? He said something about how, like, we could make a joke about how you're a great catch. And he says a bunch of things that would sound creepy. He's like, you're beautiful. And he's like, this feels serendipitous. And she's like, oh. <laughs> and she just like, I mean, bells go off in her head. And she's like, oh, my God. And he's like, are you going to the mixer? She goes, oh, I'm very single. I mean, this girl does not spout desperation at all. I once started dating someone or asked someone out on a date because I met her doing a survey in the grocery store. And I think it was like, that would be such a cute, like destiny way of meeting someone would be that if we just met randomly, oh, yeah. and she was giving out surveys in the grocery store. And then I realized, yeah, it wasn't working. No, so. unfortunately, <laughs> one in a thousand of those work. So yeah. yeah, yeah. She gets, I think, another phone call. And she has to walk off, doesn't get the guy's number. And she goes home. She wakes up in her house that is covered in Christmas trees everywhere. And, you know, she has wreaths and everywhere galore. Like, this movie is, cr like, totally supercharged on Christmas. Wait, she has more than one Christmas tree in her apartment? So she has a Christmas tree in her bathroom, okay? Like a mini one <laughs> on the sink. Like, there are Christmas trees everywhere. I mean, oh. her mom has at least two to three in her office. Her small office. So she comes to the police station because remember, she's a detective, even though she's actually wearing overalls right. and a leather coat. I don't I didn't know that was a style. They're excited because an FBI agent comes in and the FBI agent's like, I have a project for you guys. And they're like, but we're just a small police station. And then she's like, well, we need your local resources. 
and they're like, oh boy. Wait, is the guy who caught her actually a drug lord? Uh, well, so here's the thing, right? This oh, is going to okay. be the little bump, which a uh, big surprise, right? They're like, we're looking at a person of interest who moved here. So the guy's name is Carson, who is that guy that she's like, sees the headshot and she goes, oh no, I think it's actually the actor's actual headshot. The picture they show of him with their surveillance, I think is his actual headshot. So I was like, this movie knew how to cut corners. So well done on them. They say, they say we're monitoring him because they, they think he's involved in a crime. They say him and his ex, Bethany, stole. What do you think they stole, Daniel? Oh, a precious diamond. Yes. It is a... Wait, I was right? Yes. They stole a precious diamond. They're diamond thieves. <laughs> they stole... A diamond encrusted reindeer. It's <laughs> <laughs> so then it's personal. For Which her. Is, yes, I like, will get that those reindeer people. back. You don't fuck with Christmas. I just pictured in my mind the ugliest reindeer covered like in gaudy <laughs> diamonds, and the woman's even like it's a bit it's a bit tacky. But the mom is like, oh, that must be beautiful. I mean, you know, this mom is covered in reindeer swag all all the time. <laughs> uh, by the way. She's a Canadian actress, and she slips it out a few times, actually. There's a few times where she's, like, about <laughs> house. She's like, oh, I'm going to go to the house now. And I'm like, oh, you missed it. Oof. They didn't do that in your dialect teaching. <laughs> yes. You have to go higher budget Canadian actors. Yes. So there was a lot of, uh, yeah. there's like, oh, we have to go to the house now. So this diamond reindeer, evidently, um, Bethany fled the country, but he's here. And they're looking to try to find the reindeer and also, like, link him to the crime. The FBI agent. It's like, we need surveillance. We need you to monitor him. And we've rented a house out across the way from him that you can stare and monitor him. And they're like, okay, we'll do it. You know, they're like, the big guys want us to, you know, monitor him. We can do this. She goes to the rented house, which also is decorated in Christmas things. Good luck. You know, <laughs> whew, that was that's good for her. Um, and she sets up, you know, surveillance on him. And he calls her while she's at that house because he evidently found her number from somebody and asks her on a date. He was able to ask about her, but did not find out she was a cop, by the way, in this small town. So uh -huh. she tries to hide from him that she's a cop this whole time in a small town where she's known as a detective. And her mom is also in the police. Yes. But she talks to the FBI agent. And the FBI agent's like, good, let's leverage this. The FBI agent, by the way, is hates Christmas. So you know oh, wow. she's not a nice person. Because she looks around and she's like, what is this Christmas thing? In these movies, nobody's just like lukewarm on no, Christmas. Every Christmas. single person either loves Christmas with a fiery, maniacal passion yes. or loathes Christmas and cannot stand yes. it. She is the, I am FBI and I disapprove of this Christmas decorations. And so she goes, I order you to go on a date with him. And she's like, oh, no. So... <laughs> Why wasn't that her plan, by the way, if she already knew this guy? I don't know. She, she just, you know, she's not a great him. cop. She, this is not, the things just don't tweak in her head. He calls her and she just, you know, has a brain fart. So she's going to wear an earpiece and go out to dinner with him. And evidently everyone's like, oh, I don't know about you going on dates. Her partner's like, remember that last guy you went on a date with? Did his eyebrows ever grow back? And you're like, does that even make sense? Like, literally, she dates a guy and his eyebrows are gone. Like, what was gone? So, evidently, people know she's not a good she's not a good person to date or something. I don't Is know. Is that because of a sex move? I do not know where that line came from. Um, I don't know. Was she waxing his eyebrows? I Adorably clumsy, I guess. She is clumsy. She trips a few times. So, yes. You have to, right. you have to trip as a beautiful heroine. Uh -huh. So, she plants a camera in his place so she can watch everything that he does in the living room and kitchen. His house is decked out in Christmas stuff. Like, he has a tree. He's got bows on everything. He's got wreaths. He's got a wreath right over his stove. Bad, bad fire hazard. <laughs> he's got, like, uh, ornaments hanging on from a mantle that she's like, I loved these ornaments as a child. And she pulls one up and is like, and this is the Mrs. Santa Bear ornament. It's so hard to find. This is when they've broken into his apartment. They've broken into his apartment, yeah, and they're bugging to it. To plant cameras. And they're putting cameras uh -huh. in. He has share in red letters over his kitchen. I don't know where that comes from. You're like, okay. Uh, so she is totally turned on by all of this. She's like, oh my God, uh -huh. he's got so much Christmas stuff. She goes on the date. She is wearing surveillance and a camera and everything. And she walks in to see him. And he's all like, you look amazing. 
she literally starts the conversation out being like, so you ever been married? Are you still married? Do you have kids now? Because she wants information. And he's like, no, I was married. And she asks all about his ex in the first 20 seconds. And they start talking about his ex. So, you know, great date material. And they're super into it. He's like, my ex ran in a bad crowd. And she's like, did she cheat on you? And he's like, oh, maybe she lied to me. And they, I don't know, they seem to like enjoy this really weird conversation and have moments where he's like, my friends helped. I have good friends. Do you have good friends? She's like, I have good friends. And (laughs) that's their deep conversation where they're super into each other. And uh, then she mentions the ornaments at some point that she likes these special ornaments. And he's like, yeah, you know, like, I love these ornaments. Mrs. Claus is super hard fun. Fine. Oh, I love them. So they both love their same ornaments. They're just they're made. They're made for each other. He at some point says he has a whole storage unit filled of Christmas decorations. Jesus. (laughs) Like, my God. These two could have met on a Christmas fanatics. Yeah, it's like it's like what are the furries? Like this is like the Christmas furries equivalent. (laughs) Yes, where they're just Uh, like Christmas, and they're just like (laughs) orgasming Christmas. (laughs) After their date, she goes to that surveillance house, and she continues to monitor him. Not creepy at all, right? She's watching Mm -hmm. him on the video camera in his kitchen the next morning. And he is literally in a towel with a Christmas mug reading, I think, a holiday magazine, shirtless. <laughs> Wait, a, a holiday magazine? I, I mean, I'm sure it was. Whatever. I mean, this guy is Christmas everything. But he's having a <laughs> holiday mug shirtless. I mean, he's they're lucky he doesn't jerk off in the kitchen, right? Like, he's <laughs> yeah. just like, what? To the holiday magazine. What kind of surveillance is this? <laughs> Mrs. Claus. <laughs> I know he sees a Mrs. Claus in there. Oh, yeah. I've been naughty. I'm on your naughty list. So then they talk to the FBI agent. She goes, I order you to go on a second date with him. She goes, we're getting good intel. <laughs> because she's just straight up asking him the questions. Yeah, she's just she just keeps asking about his ex all the time. And he doesn't mind. He keeps like, you know, being like, oh, my ex, you know. Is this going to be some bullshit where he's not a diamond thief and his ex is? Well, of course right, she doesn't want him to be a diamond thief, right? This girl's obviously like falling for him. But what so, is the fun well, 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 if he's not you're a gonna have to, You're going to find out, Daniel. You okay. will find out. So she goes to a cafe to go on another date with him. And she has that holiday mug again with the whipped cream that looks super good. And they talk about how amazing it looks. And they never drink it the whole time. And I'm like, I really <laughs> want that drink right now. <laughs> I picture you just focusing on that. Yeah, oh, I was just like, towards the really end of, t- wait, it's the end of the scene. It's coming up to the end of the scene. Once I literally was in college and a guy walked by me with a piece of cake and my head followed it. My friend was like, did you just check out that guy's cake? Like instead of the guy? And I was like, yeah. he literally sits down and they talk more about his ex and he's like she was in a bad crowd and he's like you know like i didn't do things that were legal but i had friends who stole things and i knew people who bought stolen things so you know i just connected them and you're like i'm pretty sure that's illegal um (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's called uh what is it? Fencing. That's yeah. You're just I mean, that's just literally <laughs> you're literally coordinating like illegal transactions. Uh, yeah. yeah. She's like, you know, Bethany, my ex, she was just attracted to that. And then at this point, this guy walks by the cafe who's wearing like kind of hipster glasses, who looks like he's a middle class preppy serial killer from a Lifetime movie. He's obviously some guy from his past, like one of the bad guys. Her mom is on the feed, like on the little earbud, and the mom's like, I recognize him. He's a safe cracker. So it's, <laughs> oh yeah, I guess people call safes. They're safe crackers. Not the good kind of crackers, <laughs> Christmas crackers. He's just literally like a, the villain. He's just literally like, hey man, I'm here for work. Wink, wink. You know, special work. Like the <laughs> most obvious criminal ever. He's like, is your ex here? And he's like, no, I don't deal with that anymore. And they're like, you should leave. And he's like, I'm just saying hi. So, you know, he's all villainous. And he walks away. And then she tries to talk to her mom later and talk to the FBI agent. And she's like, I think he's innocent. And they're like, we think you got in too deep with him. You have feelings. This is bad. <laughs> you know? After date two. Date three. 
he invites her to dinner. By the way, he mentions multiple times when they, he's talking to her like at dinner and things like that. He's like, this just feels serendipitous. I think it could be a drinking game how many times they say serendipitous in this. I'd be so drunk. The screenwriter just learned that word. He <laughs> was like, we got to put it in. She comes over to his house and is blown away by his decorations. And he's like, yeah, I have a storage unit for decorations. And she's uh -huh. just like, oh, my God, I love these ornaments. They start decorating more ornaments on the tree because he has more boxes of ornaments to put on it. <laughs> and he puts on a special painted ornament that his mom gave her. And she, mom has passed away. And so he's like, this special ornament is just so special to me. And she's like, wow. And they just stare at each other. So, you know, like, oh, my God. And they almost kiss like four times in this whole thing. And then they sit down to dinner. And should they talk about his ex more? Because what do you do with dates? You talk about people's exes. <laughs> one of your exes. One not ex. The other constantly exes. talk about the one ex that you were briefly married to. And he's like, you know, she wanted one big score, a reindeer. And she stole it and just made off, you know. So he obviously knows a lot about the crime details, which I hope he is disclosed to some cops at some point. And then he gets a phone call and he's like, I better get this. So he goes over and he comes back and he's like, it was Bethany. She said, you're a cop. And what does this cop who is great at improv do? She goes, no, I'm not a cop. And he's, <laughs> you're a cop. And then she goes, okay, yeah, I'm a cop. And then she proceeds to tell him everything she knows about him and why she was and who came to her and how an FBI agent wanted to everything she tells him everything she knows <laughs> was she doing this under her real name by yes, the way yes it's all under her real name Mac <laughs> and he's not figured out prior to this that he's a cop she even at some point her gay best friend says oh I met her when she was training for the academy I mean space <laughs> academy you know these are really really bad people at hiding anything so he gets upset. He's like, leave, you know. She she goes and cries to her mom. She literally is just like bawling. Her mom, the police chief. The police come in and <laughs> and debug his house. And he's all like, ugh. So she hangs out with her friends. More fancy drinks that nobody drinks. And then she goes and leaves. And goes to his house. And this is the point where you have to decide what happens next and how the film ends. What happens oh, next, boy. Daniel? Okay, his, I'm going to lay it all mm -hmm. out. His ex, Bethany, is there, mm -hmm. and there's some kind of a compromising situation that makes it look like he has the reindeer, but actually he was just trying to tell Bethany to give it back because it's not right to steal. Uh, she runs out. She's upset, but then, no, I'm losing it. Uh, oh, she busts him on the spot, but then when the police come, they figure out that it was actually completely bethany's fault and he was innocent and trying to get her to turn it in and then they have a happy christmas where he still has like handcuff marks on his <laughs> wrist okay you know that could work for some for some film right that that makes sense for like the, our film logic in these films so you know that that could be uh -huh. a valid that's a very valid ending that could happen you're not crazy far off but okay get ready get ready for these shockers All so right. she looks through his window and she sees him unconscious on the ground. And okay. she's like, oh, my God, and runs in, feels his. I didn't incorporate the safe cracker guy. So that's. Yeah. All right. So she feels his pulse. And he's just like, uh, he's semi unconscious. He's just on the ground like, uh, and then, yeah, who walks in? Safe cracker. He is so villainous. He's just like, hey, I had to have a talk with my friend. And then the FBI agent comes in and she's like, see, you shouldn't do anything because you got an FBI agent here. And then he's like, her, she's my partner. And then uh -huh. the semi-conscious guy, Carson on the ground, is like, that's Bethany. That's my ex. <laughs> Big shocker twist. What? I didn't she see that like coming. Christmas. Bethany, I mean, the <sighs> FBI agent, Christmas hater. Also, the ex-wife, super villain. What? It makes sense. Oh my it God. makes sense. It, it's all the pieces she come together Christmas, in retrospect. So she steals things and is a Kaiser super Soze. criminal who impersonates FBI agents. Yeah, who successfully impersonates FBI Which agents to police does officers. does not speak well of that police department. Oh, what a twist. What a twist. So she goes, because I had to find out where he was and where he hid that reindeer. And he's like, I don't have the reindeer. She's like, but I hid it. In his stuff, because I knew when he moved, I had to do to put it inside of something. 
I knew he'd want and bring with him. So she pulls out the ornament that his mother had given him, which I don't uh-huh. even know how he, she put something in it because it's a globe that you can't open. It's literally like one of those normal <laughs> ornaments with paint on it. And she breaks it and it's in there. And she picks up this brooch looking reindeer with diamonds that is actually less tacky than I thought it would be from my thought about. But it's still tacky. It's a tasteful More tasteful, reindeer. but it's worth $3 million evidently. But not wow. in my opinion. You could have bought this at like Claire's. It's possible. Probably they did. So, yes. So, she picks it up and she's like, gotcha. Now, I'm going to kill you all and make it look like you killed each other. And he's all lying on the floor like, no. He can't seem to get up. I don't know what they did to him, but he just keeps lifting his head weakly (laughs) going, uh, no, Mac, leave. And so, she like pulls the gun on him and is like, Merry Christmas to you all. And then her mom busts in the cop. The mom is the chief and is like, hands up and they all arrest them because fit partnered figured out they were there i don't know something dumb and they arrest them all and then he is like lying on the ground still you know whatever his impairment is that he can't get up i don't know what he lifts his head and he goes like mac and he points to something she pulls out a present it's a mrs claus ornament so she looks at the bear ornament realizes he still cares She goes in the ambulance with him and they're about to kiss for like the eighth time. And they're interrupted by the mom who is like, hey, you guys, you know, like, I'm going to have Christmas dinner tomorrow and you should bring a date. You should bring him. And then she leaves and then they make out in the ambulance and then it ends. All right. Wait a minute. Did he not have plans for Christmas Day? Evidently not. He does not. He loves Christmas so much, but he has no plans. He loves Christmas so much, but he's planning on sitting at home alone. In his apartment. Okay, so segments now. Segments. Yeah, so it's the next day. So what happens in this film the next day? Maybe we should go to the day after that. They'll just be orgasmically happy on Christmas because that's their thing. I mean, because they met really serendipitously. So they're going to be happy forever. Yeah. But the next day, which is Boxing Boxing Day, Day. is the longest from Christmas Day that there is. Do they just fall into a deep depression? They may. I mean, Christmas is over and they're going to have to wait another year for Christmas. It is probably the worst day. And at what point do they take down the ornaments? I mean, he has to pack it all up and put it in a storage (laughs) container at some point that he's paying for. They have to spend two days taking down all the ornaments. But do they just collapse into alcoholism and fighting and just like you know in this universe i think they have a great time having their superficial conversation where they just get really excited about talking to each other and being like do you have good friends i have good friends (laughs) oh let's talk about your ex more i mean she now knows the ex so they have a lot more to talk about with that ex they can talk about his ex more that's true and then they can still talk about christmas even though it's not christmas anymore they can still talk about it like what ornaments are they going to buy for next year What new Christmas tree? Oh, she knows about Christmas tree types. They could talk more about Christmas tree brands and Uh forms. Are you Douglas fir person? Are you? Yeah, you you know. Uh, And they can have sex with like mistletoe everywhere and like screaming Santa (laughs) sounds and all. (laughs) (laughs) Just sleigh bells. You know that mom in bed is like holy Santa, like you know, like (laughs) (laughs) just like her daughter. Yep. So, you know, they're having, they're having, they're, they're making do. It's after Christmas, but they're making do because okay. Christmas will happen next year. So. Okay. So yeah. that's, that's the thing is they immediately start gearing up for next, for next Christmas year. together. Okay. Yeah. So will they make it? We've gone into will they make it? Obviously, this is the most superficial relationship ever. They do have a shared interest. In this, yes. In this universe, they will make it because they are so giddy about each other. And whatever. But I don't know. Will he keep his eyebrows? I don't know. Because I don't know what she does in a relationship. What happens? She ties them up and then plucks her eyebrows. I don't know. Like, I don't know what weird crap she'll do. But evidently, they're very well suited for each other. And they might, he might say every time they talk, he might just be like, serendipitous. And she'll be like, whew. <laughs> right. Just whisper You it. know? And they'll, they'll put Santa Claus at like on her like mantle. And it'll just sit there. So he used to have many, many criminal contacts. He did. But now he's doing something totally normal. He is. And he didn't do anything illegal. He just helped facilitate theft and selling. 
nothing it's illegal according like to him. Craig of Craigslist. He just knew people and he connected them. So there could be random criminals showing there up. There could be. The we don't know who's out there besides Safe Cracker. Pros about pros about their future versus other films. Big things. They don't say I love you, which is a big thing because okay. that's good. They don't they don't pull that one out. That's crazy. He doesn't propose another good thing they uh -huh. got for him. I mean, they got those two points because a lot of these films, they like date for 48 hours and then they propose. At least they didn't pull this out. That's a little bit healthier than other things. That's a great point. Yeah. So that's a good sign. They're willing to not accelerate it at the speed of yes. light. Oh, also Netflix, it classifies this film as a drama and a crime drama. <laughs> <laughs> so it's either this or in Bruges and Pulp Fiction. Okay, ooh versus ew. Yes. So wooing tactics. What did they do to attract one another? Oh, yeah. So evidently, talking about your ex works, they go out to dinner and they get really into each other talking about his ex. Talking about Christmas... They get super yeah. turned on by each other talking about Christmas. So, yeah. I mean. So what about for you? Like, obviously this works on them. What would work for you? Nothing in this film would work for me. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> if I came into this guy's house, I'd be like, oh, my God. I would be semi-terrified. I'd be like, why do you have Cher written over your kitchen? What is that? Why? You know, I would, yeah, no, nothing about this works for me. Nothing. Um, I would go, I, I would have gone for her partner. Uh, that's another thing. Her partner is a much better fit for her in the film in terms of, uh, she talks easily to him. He's a nice guy. He seems really level headed, but they don't date because, you know, he's like a brother. We should do shipping news right now because then I, we can go into this. Yeah. So shipping. shipping news. So what's the shipping? Can you describe what shipping is? Shipping is the word for saying that two characters should have a relationship yeah. that are not canonically put together in the narrative. Oh, okay. So who do you think should have ended yes. up together? Who had chemistry yes. that was not? So she and her partner, if they had gotten together, that actually would have made this film a lot better. And they actually okay. had a lot better dynamic. And he actually seemed a lot more heartthrobby and sweet and said nice things. Okay. That This actually would have been a good, pretty good endorphin bumps with that. So is he the other one in the picture? He's the other one in the picture I sent you. You know, nice, normal guy who's like functioning, who's really cute, who could have totally been the lead, but they didn't. They'd put this like moon face guy. I'm looking at these other posters, by the way, where she's like, has them all tied up with like a ribbon. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm catching oh, you. you. He's called the Christmas catch. Get it. Christmas catch. Get it. I got you. Yeah. And he's like, oh, you got me. All right. I think it's time for the endorphin, endorphin report. Endorphin report. Endorphin the report. endorphin report so what do you think how does this stack up as far as delivering these endorphins um so they don't have any good payoff moment when they make out an ambulance you're like this is so ridiculous like i know this usually is what i feel in a lot of these films but this was not much of a payoff in any of that but the amount of laughing i did was a pretty good endorphins in itself because laughing in itself okay. makes you have happy feelings okay so Endorphins, but only in the mocking humor. Yes, way. which is still valuable. We all need some smiles. Okay. All right. Well, that was the Christmas catch. Thanks for listening, folks. Bye bye. Bye. Then tune on in for the endorphin report. The endorphin report.